That was the decade. That was... That was the decade? That was? That was the decade that was. Yeah, I think I'll go with that one. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, the 2010s were definitely a very weird, very strange decade, to say the least. Uh, and unfortunately, the 2020s are not off to a very good start, are they? No, they're not. Uh, but I hope uh, all of you out there in YouTube land are staying safe and healthy in the midst of all this craziness. Uh, healthy both physically and mentally. Mentally can be the harder part in these kinds of circumstances, but... Uh, I think it helps knowing that we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. Um, and uh, one way that I like to stay sane mentally is uh, watching the YouTube videos of the people that I subscribe to uh, and my two YouTube friends in particular. And uh, hopefully the feeling is mutual for you guys. Hopefully you guys look forward to my videos. And so that's one way I am trying to stay sane in times like this is I'm taking the opportunity of the voluntary self-quarantining to make some videos. I am getting to a series that uh, I have been meaning to get to for weeks now, and finally I've got the time to do so. It is my end of the decade spectacular-ish. Yes, I had so much fun doing my year-end spectacular-ish a couple months ago that I decided, what the heck, why not do one for the decade as well? Uh, especially since the end of a decade only comes along once every 10 years. <laughs> Funny how that works, huh? So, uh, yeah, this will be kind of like my year-end spectacular-ish, uh, in that I will be doing a work week's worth of videos ending in the grand finale of my list of my 100 favorite albums of the 2010s. Yes, a big list. Uh, it's, I'm going to be splitting it up into two videos. Uh, it's going to be... It's, prob it's the biggest list I've ever done on this channel. Uh, probably not the biggest project I've ever done. Uh, that's probably still... Uh, the My interview with Skip from last year probably still holds the uh, title for that. But uh, yes, uh, it, needless to say, though, this was still a lot of work, uh, it, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, more fun than, than aggravation, thankfully. So yes, over the course of this week's videos, I will be giving you a variety of lists of various types for your enjoyment and amusement and bewilderment. But uh, as I did with my year-end spectacular a couple months ago, I thought I would start off this week's videos with an overview of my decade in music. Just kind of an introductory video talking about uh, how my listening habits changed over the decade and other various ways that music uh, influenced my life directly and indirectly over the past 10 years. So in the previous decade of the 2000s, uh, the thing that probably changed the most about my relationship with music was how I listened to it. Uh, I started the decade with my trusty CD Walkman here, and I ended it with an iPod. Uh, but in the 2010s, it was what I listened to that changed the most. Uh, so much so that I don't think I ever could have predicted how much my listening habits would have changed. Uh, primarily because I could not have predicted the untimely passing of my sister Kim, which was unquestionably the one event that defined the decade for me on a personal level. Uh, and that was back in uh, 2012. Yeah, it's been eight years since she passed away, but I still miss her terribly, uh, as I've mentioned in videos before. Although, uh, I like to think that she's still with me in a way, because thankfully I inherited her music collection in 2015, which played uh, undoubtedly played the biggest role in expanding not only the sheer size of my music collection. Uh, yeah, I have nearly double the number of CDs and probably five times as many LPs now as I had in 2010. But it also uh, had a huge effect on the breadth of genres that I listened to. Yeah, at the beginning of the decade, I had virtually no hip-hop or country in my music library, uh, and very little jazz. Uh, but now I'm listening to Brad Paisley, Kenny Chesney, and I'm sure several other country artists to varying degrees. And I also have much more of an appreciation for the various subgenres sub of jazz, both instrumental and vocal, uh, everything from the classics like Dave Brubeck and Ella Fitzgerald to the contemporary artists like Boney James and Kurt Elling, uh, both of whom were in my sister's collection and I've grown quite fond of. And uh, also another big thing that happened to me in music uh, this decade, this past decade, was in 2017, I think it was, I also invested in a new stereo system, which I have right here. I think you can see, I think it's out of frame, but yeah, the cover of my turntable is right here. Uh, and uh, this new stereo system uh, compelled me to start listening to vinyl records again. And in so doing, that helped me fulfill a resolution 
to listen to more classic rock and pop like my sister loved and grew up with. Yeah, for some reason, until recently, I had been sorely neglecting the music from the de decades before I was born, uh, and which is probably only natural. Uh, it's just, you know, still it just doesn't help that I'm, I'm a little ashamed of the fact that I just did not appreciate uh, earlier artists until just recently. Uh, and that, of course, leads me to the other huge change in my music universe this decade, my YouTube channel and uh, in general, and Backtracks in particular, uh, which has existed from the beginning of my channel. I actually had the foresight as I started my YouTube channel uh, just a couple weeks into it to do start doing Backtracks, so that has existed since the beginning of my YouTube channel, and it has given me not only the uh, a vehicle through which to explore classic albums on vinyl, you know, to, to uh, resolutions that I had to explore older music and to explore uh, and get into vinyl more, but uh, that feature has, uh, uh, you know, for that reason and others, that feature, Backtracks, has given me perhaps more fulfillment personally than any other thing that I do on this channel. And going over all that in my mind, you know, uh, reminiscing over the past decade, prepping the notes for this video, it's, it got me to wondering if my sister hadn't passed away and if I hadn't inherited her music collection, would my music sphere have broadened as much as it did over the past decade? Because if it hadn't, I might never have convinced myself to start YouTubing in the first place. And uh, I, I just I think this would have been a very boring YouTube channel if I hadn't, um, if all this stuff hadn't happened. And if I hadn't joined this YouTube community and gained some awesome friends, you know who you are out there. Uh, I may very well have missed out on checking out even more kinds of music I otherwise probably never would have considered. Uh, you saw in my uh, favorite albums of 2019 list, I gave several shout-outs, several of the albums on there I might never have uh, tried listening to if it hadn't been for my YouTube friends out there. So you guys have had a huge influence on me. I am so glad that I got to YouTubing. And, you know, the more that I think about all this stuff that I've just talked about, the more I see all of the above as my sister's gift to me. I mean, if, if there's a silver lining to losing my sister with whom I bonded over music during the last several years of her life and uh, have appreciated endlessly, uh, barely a day goes by that I don't think about her in some way. My only regret over all this is that my sister never got to see my YouTube channel because I'm sure she would be a huge fan of it. She'd be a subscriber. She would never miss a video. But in a way, she is uh, watching my YouTube channel uh, and Yes, I, I like to think that she's, you know, up there watching every video that I do and uh, enjoying it to the fullest that she possibly could. So, uh, yeah, uh, all this, I think, is, as I said, is my sister's gift to me as well. You know, everything from me appreciating more music and more music on vinyl to the YouTube friends that I have accumulated and that have, you know, become not just YouTube friends, but friends in my own personal life. Uh, some of whom I just, I can't imagine my life now without these friends in my life. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I like to think that uh, eventually, hopefully not too soon, hopefully many years down the line, uh, I will be able to meet up with her again, give her a big, huge hug, and, uh, yeah, reminisce over everything that's happened to me since she's passed away. And uh, in some ways, she's influenced my life more since she's passed away than she did while she was here. I, it's, it's a thing, it's an awful thing to think that you, you know, it, it makes it sound like maybe I didn't appreciate her while she was here, but I like to think I did. I mean, we did, I didn't get to see her very often in the last several years since we lived up here in Oregon. So yeah, I did appreciate uh, every visit that she made. We spent, uh, we set aside a day or two every time she was here to do our own little thing together, spend time, have lunch, uh, go music shopping while she was here. So yeah, I like to think that I appreciated her while she was here. Uh, but yeah, I've appreciated her endlessly since since she's passed away. So yeah, wonderful, wonderful memories. Another thing that changed over the last 10 years in terms of my music consumption habits was how I bought music. Uh, when the 2010s began, uh, I was still getting music from a, a website called yourmusic.com. Now, a little backstory. Uh, you guys might remember, you may have heard of uh, music clubs, uh, by mail music clubs like uh, Columbia House and the BMG Music Club, which eventually merged into one entity. And that was the source of those, uh, you know, 10 CDs or 12 CDs for a penny or for a dollar. And you only had to buy uh, three more CDs within the next two years or, or some kind of a combination, some sort of a fulfillment agreement. Well, yourmusic.com was an offshoot of Columbia House and BMG. And basically it was a 
Q-based music site. And so in other words, you, you would go onto their website, go over their list of CDs uh, that they had available and add them to a queue. And the way it worked was they charged you $6.99 a month and every month they would send you the next CD in your queue. No postage charge, just $6.99 including postage. And uh, the trick was though you had to keep your queue up because whether or not you had a CD in your queue, they would still charge you the $6.99 a month. And uh, I was a member of yourmusic.com. Well, I was a member of Columbia House for probably 10, 12, 15 years before that. Uh, basically ever since CDs started. Actually, I think I might have done it when they still had cassettes and before they had CDs. But anyway, and I went, I, I wasn't one of those that kept canceling and re-upping my membership so I get, you know, bunches of CDs for free. I was a good boy and I, I think I recycled my membership once or twice, but not with the intention of getting a bunch of CDs for free. I just, you know, ended my membership and then I decided, you know, went a few months, maybe a year or so without it and decided I wanted to start it again. So totally innocent. I swear I wasn't, you know, hoarding CDs. But anyway, uh, yeah, I eventually signed up with yourmusic.com and I was a member of theirs for two or three years until, until the bitter end. They closed up in June of 2011. But yeah, I've got several of my CDs in my collection are, uh, from yourmusic.com. I got several great CDs, some that are in my all-time favorites list that I just on a whim gave it, gave them a try. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a lot of fun and I, I was kind of sad to see that go. The the system is pretty much outmoded by now. You know, they, they had a website so that was, you know, when the web was the way to do things basically. It kind of outlived its usefulness now that, you know, e-commerce is so huge with, you know, Amazon and so many places where you can buy music. But anyway, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And uh, in terms of brick and mortar stores, there were a lot of stores that closed over the years. Uh, most of the chain music stores closed in the previous decade of the 2000s. But uh, yeah, at the beginning of this decade in 2011, we lost a big major bookstore chain, Borders Books and Music. Uh, I got a lot of great CDs um, and some DVDs, some music related DVDs, which I will eventually show you one of my final purchases from there, which was fantastic. One of my best favorite purchases ever. But yeah, uh, I took advantage of their going out of business sale and got several good uh, deals from them. And of course, uh, at the end of the decade was my biggest personal uh, music retail loss was Skips Records and CD World. They closed uh, last summer in August of 2019. And yeah, I am still feeling the loss of that and I'm actually feeling more and more magnified loss. Hopefully it's just temporary loss with the uh, stores around town, all stores of every kind closing because of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going on. Uh, hopefully by the grace of whoever is up there watching over us, um, the stores will survive. But yeah, that is how my music retail uh, buying habits changed over the last decade. And now on to the second segment of today's video. Now that my personal recollections over the decade in music are done, uh, I thought it would be fun to share some facts, uh, some statistics, I guess you'd say. Well, not really statistics, but uh, just some info factoids uh, about the past decade, the 2010s, in the world of music. Uh, main reason I'm doing this is to demonstrate how long a period of time a decade is. It, it was kind of shocking when I looked, looked over this stuff, and I also thought it would just be fun to do in general. Uh, some of my uh, younger viewers uh, might not get much out of this just because, uh, you know, if for those of you who can remember 2010, you may not necessarily have been into music at that point in your lives. But, uh, you know, the older viewers, the ones that are closer to my age in my audience, uh, might be a little surprised and shocked and wowed by some of this information. Uh, my first list is uh, artists who started in the 2010s. And it's not an exhaustive list. Uh, I'm not naming all of them, just, you know, the, the more high profile names. Just to, as I said, give you an idea of uh, how much time uh, is involved in a decade. Uh, it probably wouldn't shock you to know that Shawn Mendes, Lord, and Sam Smith started their careers in the 2010s. But uh, it might be kind of surprising, uh, it was, was certainly surprising to me, to realize that One Direction, Bruno Mars, Ariana Grande, Imagine Dragons, Casey Musgraves, Walk the Moon, Lana Del Rey, and Foster the People had not yet released albums when the 2010s began. Yeah, that's kind of shocking, isn't it? And well, there are three other artists that you can kind of add to that list, just kind of with a little asterisk beside them. Uh, Drake, Tame Impala, and Justin Bieber. They did put out their first EPs late in 2009, but they actually didn't release full studio albums until 2010. So. How about that? Uh, yeah, it's kind of amazing uh, how much in the music landscape has changed in the past 10 years. 
And now on to the final list of today's video. Uh, it's a bit more of a somber list. I kind of hate to end the video on a downer note, but it's at the same time I thought it would be good to pay a final tribute to all of the artists that we lost uh, in the t decade of the 2010s who passed away. And again, it's not an exhaustive list. It, there are way too many names to name them all. But still, I just wanted to give a final fond farewell to the artists that uh, passed away during the decade of the 2010s. Uh, the metal and hard rock genres seemed to suffer an inordinate number of losses uh, in that in the last decade. Ronnie James Dio, Lemmy Kilmister, Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park, Chris Cornell of Soundgarden and Audio Slave, Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots, and Malcolm Young of ACDC all passed away during the 2010s. Uh, there are a couple of groups out there that lost more than one founding member during the 2010s. Uh, for instance, Big Star lost both Alex Chilton and Andy Hummel, and both of them passed away in 2010, incidentally. And two-thirds of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Keith Emerson and Greg Lake, both passed away in 2016. So, not only, you know, two members from the same group, but they respectively groups lost the members in the same year. Strange coincidences. And speaking of 2016, Oh, a huge number of very, very high-profile notable losses just in that year alone. David Bowie, Prince, George Michael, Leonard Cohen, Glenn Fry, and Leon Russell all passed away in the same year. And the list doesn't stop there. Many more notable names passed away in 2016. Uh, other major stars we lost in the last decade were Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, Tom Petty, Fats Domino, Amy Winehouse, Natalie Cole, Chuck Berry, Doris Day, Joe Cocker, B.B. King, Avicii, and again, that's just a few of them. It's just, it was just a terrible uh, decade for losses in the world of music. Uh, more classic stars, uh, Phil Everly of the Everly Brothers passed away in the 2010s, as did Clarence Clemens of the E Street Band, a fantastic saxophonist, uh, Ray Manzarek of The Doors, Edgar Fruza of Tangerine Dream, Maurice White from Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Ginger Baker of the band Cream, fantastic drummer. Uh, and rock and pop and R&B are not the only genres that suffered notable losses uh, in the past decade. Folk pioneers Pete Seeger and Richie Havens passed away last decade. Uh, jazz giants Dave Brubeck and Ornette Coleman. Blues masters Dr. John and Leon Redbone. And country legends Glenn Campbell and George Jones all passed away in the previous decade. And I am not done here, folks. There are still several more names on this list. Uh, international stars. So yeah, it wasn't just the English language music world that lost uh, significant personalities in the past decade. Joao Gilberto, the Brazilian jazz uh, giant. Uh, Hugh Masekela from Africa, as well as two French pop stars from the 60s and 50s, Johnny Halliday and Charles Aznavour, both passed away in the 2010s, and uh, also the world of film music, film scoring, uh, film composers we lost in the past decade include James Horner, whose credits include two Star Trek movies as well as Titanic and Avatar, uh, John Barry, who was most famous for the James Bond movies, as well as one of my favorite music fr uh, mu movies from my childhood, The Black Hole, fantastic science fiction movies, uh, John Morris, who was famous for his uh, work with uh, Mel Brooks, the director Mel Brooks, he scored many, many Mel Brooks movies. Uh, Joel Goldsmith, who was the son of late composer Jerry Goldsmith, as well as Marvin Hamlish, who actually was one of only 15 EGOT winners, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony winners. So yeah, Mar Marvin Hamlish passed away uh, in the past decade as well. And to round out the list, uh, a bunch of non-performers uh, in the music world. Songwriter Jerry Goffin passed away in the 2010s. Producers George Martin, who worked with the Beatles, as well as Phil Ramone, who worked with Billy Joel and countless other musicians. And last but not least, a radio DJ Casey Kasem passed away during the 2010s. So yeah, that was a uh, that was an exhaustive, well, just a superficial list practically of just you know the, the high profile names. And as I said, that's not all of them that passed away over the past decade. So yeah, just many, many artists. Hopefully the 2020s won't be quite as brutal a decade for the world of music. So yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this overview of uh, my own personal decade in music, as well as the decade in music at large. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. 
And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell down below so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.